Garden Invaders. Today we're in Ferensfield in Oxfordshire. And this used to be an American Air Force base during the war, didn't it? I wonder what the propeller was doing here. Yeah. So excuse the pun, but we're the show that propels gardens into the 21st century. That's right, I've done the design and we've got all the plants, we've got all the materials, we've got the landscapers, all the boys, they've just flown in too, haven't they? Uh -huh. But there is a catch, isn't there? There is. She's got to get all my questions right to win she the plants. Does. That's right, so we better go, wouldn't we? Ah, uh, chocks away? Chocks away! <laughs> Today we're invading the garden of Joanne Garvey and she's being helped out by Mum Iris. Joanne's a community youth worker, a mother of two and also studying for a degree. So no surprise that she hasn't found time to get to grips with the garden. She's always helping others and it's about time somebody gave her a hand. And that's a job for garden invaders. Well, it's definitely a sun trap here, isn't it? It is today. Oh, and I mean, we've done some work here. We've got a nice blue fence, nice pergola. Yeah, I've tried. I have tried little bits over the years, but it's um, it's time and money and the usual stuff, really. Oh, well, so time-wise, do you work? Yeah, I work. I'm a youth worker on the village, and obviously two children and my dog. So We're low maintenance. Yeah. Somewhere to sunbathe, maybe? Yeah. Iris, do you, do you pop over and uh, are you looking to sunbathe over here as well? Yes, it will make a change to sunbathe here instead of at my place. Oh, right, <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah. So you have somewhere to come. That's right, yeah. Get yeah, on Yeah. Do you advise on the gardening? Are you into I have tried. <laughs> <laughs> but given she up. has tried. Yeah. Yeah. She has tried. There's some nice detail here, though. <laughs> That's this, all right, he's being serious. This is, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's sustainable planting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to rejuvenate the forest a bit at a time. <laughs> There's a lot of work sticking them in pots, they just dry out, don't they? What do you fancy doing, Joe, to this? Wow, anything really. Lots of sun areas. Right. Um, bit of decking, bit of entertaining areas. Slaving, paving slabs, anything going on. Really. Sounds good, yeah. Well, it's not, I mean, it's not a huge area, is no, it? So, it you know, you can't do to have too many uh, different separate areas mm. within a garden. This is going to be a doddle then, is it? Well, and it's never a doddle. It's never a doddle. And also, you've got to win all the plants, remember that. Oh, so you're yes. always doing the questions. I am doing the so questions. So you set mum up big she time has, here. Yeah. yeah, you're going to have to really help out today because we're one man down already. <laughs> or one arm down, shall I say. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right, we better go and do these questions then. We're doing them out the front. Okay. So there's no I'll sneaking. Yeah, win them all. <laughs> Health and safety, especially when you're follically challenged like me. <laughs> so, well, the first thing we're going to do is put a deck in over there with David. A nice big deck, get as many people in there as possible. I think it'd be about sort of three and a half, maybe four meters square. And we have some paving coming from the door, and then it's just going to kink round from one side through. So, give it a bit of movement through there. So, we're going to put these trees around the back here, add to the nice backdrop to the deck. And there you go. Cheers, Tom. There's your Invader for a Day t-shirt. You've got to wear it with pride. I will. I know you will, and you're going to get stuck in. First thing to do is get this paving up. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that. Good. OK, <laughs> let's do it. Joe's fine. Joe's right. Well, we've got some really nice trees here for you if you garden. They are small trees, so they're not going to take over. So they're ideal for a small garden. And then scent, lots of scent in, in climbers and also some of the other plants. But these are all climbers, so they're going to cover up some of your fencing. Oh. I know it's very pretty and blue. Yeah, that's fine. We'd just break it up a little <laughs> yeah. bit. And then the third group, shrubs really, and one or two sub shrubs there. But these are going to add quite a lot of height. Some are evergreen, some aren't. But again, yeah. a lot of them are scented. So we've got the viburnum there that's scented. Yeah. And keeping the scent theme going, we've Lots got herbs, um, culinary herbs, and then just sort of lavenders for the aromatic scent. Mm. So it should be a very scented garden if you get all the questions right. If I get them right, hopefully we'll get them right. Now that bit over there, those are the finishing touches. We've got a really modern table and chairs, which yeah. is quite trendy. It is, isn't it? Uh, and a few candles, so that could be the finishing bit hopefully. of the garden. Is she up for hopefully. that? Is she oh, I think questions? so, yeah. 
I think so. Now let I me hope so. tell you a bit more about the trees. We've got this one here, which is Sorbus Joseph Rock. And as you can see, it's got berries on it. Those berries in the autumn go a yellow colour. And it's a great tree for autumn colour. The it's leaves go through a yellow, orange and red colour. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't get too big. It's quite an upright tree. And then this tree here is Laburnum Voisii, which you can see it's in the pea family. It's got the pods on it. Yeah. But those in the spring are just covered in yellow, almost wisteria-like flowers. One thing to remember though, the peas inside the pods are poisonous, but your children are old enough to. Yeah, they are, and they wouldn't touch peas anyway. No, I know most children are like, <laughs> what, eat that? So here we go, for the trees. Question. Okay. <clears throat> what colour are the fruit of peppers when, a, when they are picked unripened? Are they green, red, or yellow? I would say that they would be green. Are you sure? Um, yes. Yes, you're so. right. <laughs> That's okay, so we've got the trees. So we've got a bit more height yes, in the garden. I'll get Ed to take them away. Oh, watch out. Thank you. My design for Joanne's garden uses lots of different materials, but in a very organised and geometric way. So coming out the back door, we're going to keep this existing pergola. I think we have to do something to it. It's a bit, a bit old. It needs tarting up a little bit. I think also we're going to keep a seating area there, which gets the shade later on in the day. But then on, I take over. We have a lawn to one side. It's only a bit small lawn, but it can be relayed every year because it's so small. And it can be nice for Megan to play on. And then planting on either side, so it's going to lead you through up this nice slab path. And then when you get here, no, you can't go straight through. You have to turn one way and then up onto this big deck. Now, this is a sun-loving deck area, but the only way back is either that way or you can go through here. There's going to be a simple archway that leads you to the garage back there. Now, I can't do any work, can I? I can't do any digging with this arm, so I'm just going to go and get my tape measure. Have you got two children? I have, yeah. Boy of 13 and a little girl who's five. Oh, okay. 13, what a fantastic age. Oh, you wouldn't believe, yes. <laughs> Kevin and Perry eat your heart out. <laughs> I've got a 15 year old sister, and there are moments, mm. but fun as well. Yeah, yeah. No, and cool. you work at a youth hall? Youth centre. Centre. Yeah, I run a youth centre on the village, so mm -hmm. I work with 13 to 19 year old. Young people. Young That's people. Because, yes. Sucker for punishment, you, aren't I you? I think so, yeah. <laughs> I think I need to reevaluate at some point soon before I get lots of grey hair. Now, we've got some really nice climbers here. Now, if I said to you, name a scented climber, honeysuckle. Yeah, yeah and absolutely. you know what it's called, honeysuckle? No. Something. Right, well, you, as a kid, you must have done this. Pull the flower off and yeah. then suck the... Right. Well, it tastes really sweet. So that's where honeysuckle you know, comes from. That. This one's wow. called Graham Thomas, and it starts off white mm -hmm. and then goes a buff yellow colour. Yeah. Now this is one of my favourite climbers. This, this one's Trachleospernum, and this one's Jasminoides. Has the scent like a jasmine. Mm -hmm. It's got these lovely pinwheel, Starfish, aren't they? yeah, flowers. Really Again, it's self climbing. It's evergreen. And last. You will recognise that one. That one's Jasminum officinalis. Quite a vigorous climber. Yeah. Evergreen to semi-evergreen. Doesn't right. always hold all its leaves. Mm -hmm. And it's got that really beautiful jasmine scent. Yes. So, so you're going to be overwhelmed by scent Lovely. out there. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> this ah, is brings me on to the question. Absolutely. What should you do to daffodils after they've flowered in order to keep them at their best? Should you lift the bulbs, remove the leaves, or deadhead the flowers? I would say deadhead the flowers. Why do you think you do that? Well, because I've heard that if you remove the leaves, it actually that's supposed to kill them. Um, and why would you lift the bulbs? I've never heard of anyone doing that. So, deadhead the flowers is the right one. <laughs> 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 now there's lots of climbers there, so I think we need Tom and Dave to come and get those. Tom! The great thing about decks is they add instant level changes to gardens. Brilliant, we're just floating it over the soil with landscape fabric underneath it. Also, they're great even in the sort of autumn or the spring because they are a nice warm surface. They're much warmer than stone or brick or other garden surfaces. And at the same time, they're quite quiet too. That's what I like about them. And Dave, do you know why you're putting this post in? Got absolutely no idea, mate. No, there's one going there and on the corner there and one over there. I've dug the holes ready, I just can't. There's, there's central heating bits turning up. 
So we're gonna use the 15 mil copper pipe. Right. Yeah. Drill some holes in, yeah, we don't, yeah, through there, and just feed it through horizontally. And the same on the back. And the same on the back. So that's going right. to give a nice sense of enclosure to the deck. Right. Yeah. Put the trees behind it. Yeah. Okay. And then climbers in front of it. It's all design speak. I just have to think of the practicalities of it, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> but do we want it to let it go all their degree? You know the way copper goes. Yeah. You know, like ages. Yeah. Yeah. Or do we want to keep the boys polishing their poles over there? Leave them polishing. They're doing a good job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mate. Definitely. I'll leave it to you. I'll catch you later. Centre. Yep. And what sort of things do you do rather than just entertain them? Informal education. Right. So it's the things hopefully that schools miss, you know, like personal um, relationship based stuff, jobs and um, drugs awareness, sexual awareness, okay. that type of thing. Now we <laughs> here we've got mainly sort of shrubs that are going to get big. Got Pittosporum, mm -hmm. um, really nice evergreen shrub, got these wavy leaves yeah, and very, look. very black stems. Uh, then we've got this cornice. This cornice is really grown for its purple stems like most yeah. cornices. This one's uh, known as Russell Ringii ah. um, and it's these strong purple stems and the leaves are purple as well. It does get flowers but you're really growing it for the for the stem colour. Right. Now you're doing very well at the moment. Yes, 100%. Which of these is a self-clinging evergreen climber that provides cover for walls or fences? Is it ivy, privet or holly? I think ivy. You're very good, are <laughs> <I know. laughs> Good news, you can uh, go and sit on that lovely seat over there and relax. Yeah, that's lovely, Tom. Over there, please. Oh, don't swing me, I've seen too many Laurel and Hardy. All right, Charlie? Yeah, we're doing really well. Lovely. Three questions, right? Look at all these plants. Beautiful. And you're we're in a long here, mate. Yeah. Well, you know what it's like. I mean, you know, doing these gardens in a day, decks go in so quickly, don't they? I know. Well, even I'd do a deck. So it's just straightforward. They're light to do, easy to level. Much yeah. easier than paving with cement and mortar. And Absolutely. Yeah. All this access. I know. It's really good access. Another thing is, if you've got a tiny little access, only one person get in at a time. It's a nightmare. But look, lots of people working different good areas soil. of the garden. Sunshine. Good sunshine. What more could you want? So what else is going on up here then? Yeah. Well, the paving's going in quite quickly. Right. So. so it's it's coming out the um, coming out the back door and it's linking up to the deck area over there, but it's sort of got a bit of a side step in it. And has Iris been pulling her weight? Oh, she's doing a great job, yeah. Yeah. What have you been up to then, Iris? Oh, lots of things. Lifting slabs. Oh, raking. of course, that was all paving along there, it wasn't was. it? I lifted them. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, and you've been yeah. keeping the boys on their toes. Definitely. Keeping them working. Yeah. Well, I'll go and see Joe because she's got her feet up at the moment. Lucky Joe. I bet you'd like to know what's going on in that guy. I would love to know what's going on in that guy. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll have to wait and see. Not much further to go. Okay. One last group of plants. I wonder if we can make right. it 100%. Oh, please. They're all the herbs and aromatics, so lots of scent there. Mm. Culinary ones, things like the mint and the chives and the basil likes quite a rich soil that doesn't dry out, so yeah. you'd keep those planted separately. From the Mediterranean plants, we've got rosemary and thyme, which like a porous soil. Now this question is a practical question. Okay. And we've got three different plants here. Right. We've got Crocosmia, which is that bright orange one called Lucifer. Then we've got Allium, and this Allium is known as the drumstick Allium. And then the last one here is called Lirio Mascara. Similar, but all slightly different. <laughs> now, what I want you to tell me is which one of these three isn't in the lily family? I would say that one. That's the allium isn't in the lily. I would say that one isn't. And it's a bit of a guess based on the leaves. Right. Unfortunately, Oh, wrong. The cross Crocosmia. That's the Irish family. <laughs> oh, never mind. I'm sorry about that. Oh, well. uh, uh, never mind. You can't win them all. Can't win them all. Can't win them all. But you're not finished yet. We have a little project for you, which I've got right. set up just over there. Okay. Well designed and 
have all the hard landscaping elements slot together properly, think about the unit size. Like here, we're using 600 by 600 slabs. Now, it's not just a stroke of luck that the corner of the deck lines up with this pointing gap here, and we've taken all the clues from the door of the house, because this path lines up with the center of the door from the house. And that's the key thing. We've laid out the whole garden from this point so that the deck lines up with the end of the slabs and all the slabs, because we know that they're 600 wide, they're on module and therefore we have to work to that. Now, if they were bigger or smaller, we'd have to work to that and make sure that all the hard elements of the garden link together. And that's the way to get a designed look. So it's important to think about how the landscape material is gonna to fit together. Otherwise you end up with all the little cuts around the edges or you gotta plant up the gaps and it doesn't quite look slick enough. Now under here, under this pergola, is quite a shady part of the garden. So rather than increasing the shade by using dark materials, we've used a light paving material. We're gonna set it off with some light gravel so it's gonna brighten it up and help bounce the light around. And if you leave a lot of bare soil or use dark materials, it'll sap the light and make the whole area feel a lot darker. Now, while I'm here by the back door, I think I'll make the boys a cup of tea. Anyone want a cup of tea, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, all right, mate. Right. Milk, sugar? Milk and two, milk and two. Now, talking to Iris, your mum, she says that you're really good at bossing people around and organising, <laughs> but when it comes to art, you're a bit... A mm, bit wavy, a bit we, shuddery. Bad experience with a teacher. And it, uh, what, yeah. an art teacher? Yes. Well, that's she unfortunate. To me. We're going to be changing your mind, hopefully, because okay. your project is these little nightlight glasses. Mm. We want you to sort of pretty them up, because sometimes in the garden we, we concentrate on all the big overall, but it's the detail that just tips the balance. So okay. we've got some glass paints here, we've got violet right. and a cerise pink and yellow and orange. So we want you to be imaginative, and imaginative. if I say simple is more. Okay. Whoa, look at this colour chart. See? Fantastic. Shows you how to do all your colours, hot colours, cool colours, harmonious colours, contrasting colours. Well, I think I'm getting a vibe here that I might be doing something with colours. You are so sharp, Charlie. You really are sharp well, today. I didn't come down the last rain shower, you know. <laughs> but look, I mean, sort of, to me, these sort of just say cool colours, don't they, to you? Yeah, they're very chilled, like purples and blues and whites. So yeah. It's sort of very calming. And lots of green, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a border that we've designated especially for you. And uh, it's really the way you want to combine and put together and the heights and the textures and stuff as well as the colour. Any choice? Yeah, any, you can have anything you want. Leave you to it. Fantastic. Well, it's all coming on pretty well in the back garden. As you can see the pergola. He's getting a coat of stain, actually. It's not paint, because if you paint it, you've got to reapply it every two or three years. You've got to sand it down, and it peels off. It's a bit of a palaver. But stain is just soaked up by the wood, and actually, it's just so easy to put another coat over it again when, when it fades away. But it's structurally sound, the pergola, and we've got three people working on it, and it's going pretty well. And this I'm pretty pleased with, too. This copper screening at the back here, now, we're wondering whether to put a detail in it. Might do something like this over here. and we'll put a sort of crossbar in it and maybe put some more bars down to sort of strengthen it, but I'm not sure at the moment. See if we've got enough time at the end of the day because, of course, the clock's ticking away. Now, Dave. What's your mate? Can you give us a hand? Because we want to get this. This is actually going to create the archway across here. So we're going to extend the copper theme, yeah? I'm dying, have, I'm dying to have a look at this, mate. See if yeah, it well, works. I've got a dodgy wrist, right? So you're going right. to, have to apply all the. We're power. going right through my side, aren't we? So it's got to go my side you, first. Oh, your side first, yeah. come in. See? Right, just... push him right away in. Yeah. There you go. How's that? Lovely. Yeah, is that nice? Oh, 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 sorry. Ow. Very pleasant. Now, you know you're saying about this. If you've got some um, old wire and you yeah. stripped it back and you've got like copper wire, you could wind it through. Don't you think that's very arty? We Obviously had, not. We, no. We had thought of that. She's trying to claim that as her idea. Yeah, we were talking about copper wire, weren't we? We were, we were talking about it. We were talking about it. We were talking about copper wire. That's it. Look at that. Always get your designer to trample your flower. Just needs well a bit of <laughs> Let me have a look. <laughs> yeah, that's quite nice because we can have climbers up and over it. That's going to work well because it does need breaking up with climbers. But what do you think? What do you think, Dave? Very nice. You've yeah. impressed me again. Yeah, Charlie, what do you think? You didn't ask me, did he? No, <laughs> I was messing with you. <laughs> Designer tap from coming on here. <laughs> How goes it in the art department then? Not too good, really. Oh, that one's all right. I'm not arty. 
So your mum knows you well then? She knows me very well. Well, I have very to say, well. I think that's all right. That's the last one, so kind of, I think it improved. Well, you learn from your mistakes. It's like gardening. Yeah. Just get out there and do it, and you soon learn what works and what doesn't. But that with candles in, it will really pick up the light. Yeah, pick in the dark with the candles. <laughs> I'll just put a colour around. Well, that's you finished now. The garden's underway, but if you pop inside, mm -hmm. no peeking outside. Okay. And we'll do all the last little bits. Okay. Off you go. Okay. No talking to your mum. But then I'm blending the colours through to the, the lilacs of the turf lily and the scabious, and then travelling on through with the pinks and the whites. Because pinks and whites and blues sort of create distance, so they fade away, so it'll make the garden look longer. So Joe tells me. Since I was a baby. Because this, this Berensfield used to be a uh, US. The, yes, the Americans were stationed here in the war. They've got memorial to them down the road. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so you've seen it change quite a lot oh, then. Yeah, from Nissen huts to a complete new building. New yeah. village. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's very nice, very pretty village. It is, yeah, it's yeah. quite nice. This is your question, Iris, and it's for the lovely table and chairs. Very contemporary and simple. So, uh, how's, your, how's your gardening knowledge? Usually not too bad. Oh, well, that's positive then. Which of the following vegetables would you earth up to blanch the stems as it grows? Is it potato, leek, or swede? You eat the leek stem. Leek. Well done. Oh, You're right. <laughs> That's all right then. I think she's set her heart on that. I have to say, she wasn't worried about the plants. She just wanted the seeds. Oh, she's going, oh, that's yeah, nice I can imagine that. Yeah. Well, that's you finished. So you can go and have a little relax, but don't tell her anything, I will won't. you? No, 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 not about what you've won. No, no. no. So you pop in there, have a cup of tea. This is Echinops Retro Blue Globe or the globe thistle. It's a great perennial plant. It'll come up in the summer. Likes a really well-drained soil and a sunny spot. And you can see it's got a wonderful sort of globe, perfect circular flower there. And the bees love it. Are you still there? Oh yeah, you are still there. Absolutely dousing itself with pollen. It likes a really well-drained soil. In fact, it's almost drought tolerant and a sunny spot. The only problem with it is, in fact, that once it's flowered, the foliage sort of fades and dies a little bit, so make sure it's not right at the front of the border. And the best thing about it is it doesn't need staking, it's got a really firm stem, and you can use them as cut flowers or dried flowers. I love this tree so much, I've just put one in my own garden. It's perfect for a small garden, won't get too big, but a nice upright shape without too much spread. It's one of the ornamental ash trees, Sorbus Joseph's Rock, and it's got great foliage that turn a sort of fiery, sort of orangey red in the autumn. And then you get these berries that are green at the moment, but they go quite a, an intense yellow, sort of an orangey yellow. And the combination between the berries and the foliage is just fantastic. So I put it here behind this screening, to just break up the line of the fence and sort of break up the line of the buildings beyond and add a bit more privacy and intimacy to the garden. So really I'm using it for its height. This fantastic tree that represents pretty much all the seasons. Remind us what the garden looked like this morning. It was very long grass with a nice pavement going up the middle. Nice mm, pavement, you really liked that, did you? I really, I've been sarcastic. That's one bit we and left there was in. Some, st <laughs> <laughs> some stones over here, and it was generally incredibly untidy and not very nice. Now I think uh, we've 
the invaders have caused a bit of a stir in the village. Everybody's talking about it. <laughs> Are you ready to open your eyes? <sighs> yes. Off you go then. <gasps> oh no! Does it's it look a bit different? It's not my garden. Oh wow. I am speechless, kind of, really. <laughs> <laughs> because it just, I don't know, I didn't know what to expect. I don't know if it was this or, but it's, it's gorgeous. It really is. You've got your deck. Sunbathing on. I can't believe it. Mum won garden. the seat and the table. Oh, good on you, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe's got the trees at the back there, so we come up and just screen you off a bit. Yeah. Yeah, the trees, the trees are behind the copper screen, and then there's some climbers growing up. Yeah. It's going to cover most of that copper screen, lots of scented climbers, so it'll smell great yeah. as well. And we got a lovely border planted by moi, didn't they? Bring lots of bumblebees yeah. and butterflies into the garden. Well, Iris, I can see you've been doing the painting, <laughs> but what else have you been up to? Oh, I lifted some slabs and moved them from that hideous pile. Oh, that? Oh, you didn't um, like it either, then? <laughs> not really. Um, like, really. Leveled some ground, raking and things like that. Oh, I knew well, Joe wasn't doing much out here at all. Well, <laughs> we, were, we were one person down, you know, we needed Iris to help out. <laughs> so what does it mean to have the garden totally done and dusted and finished all in a day? Oh, massive amounts. It just, it means so much. It's not something I would ever get to done, particularly as well as this, ever, ever. And, you know, to, to go out Mum the obviously needs <laughs> that comment, giggling the way there. She knows I have tried, but I'm just hopeless, what can I say? And this is just amazing. You know, you guys have worked so hard to turn it into this, and it's just, it means a huge amount. Well, it really does mean a lot.